we not only create home ownership, we also preserve home ownership as well, and we've been doing it for over 20 years, working with existing homeowners, helping them repair and revitalize their homes, okay? And so that's kind of what I'm gonna be talking about today is how we can work with current homeowners, especially those who are over 65, and help them stay in their home, okay? So we have our traditional home building, which we sell and build over 100 houses every year. And then our home preservation work, we have four ways in which we do that, okay? We have what's called the Mortgage Foreclosure Prevention Program. So we work with folks who are kind of living on the edge and unable to um, pay their mortgage. We work and help with uh, their lender and uh, try to help the avoid con uh, evictions, okay? We also have a couple of thrift stores called the ReStore, and this is where we sell affordable housing products to folks so they can fix up their homes at an affordable right, uh, price. And then we renovate homes through our program called A Brush With Kindness. So this is what we've been doing for the past 20 years. We use volunteers from the community to help their neighbors in their community fix up their homes so they can continue living in affordable property. And lastly, we've been modifying homes for the last year, okay? We have a new program called Age in Place, okay? And we've got a lot to learn. We've been helping older adults stay in their home through a brush with kindness, and now we're gonna focus just on older adult population, 65 and older, with our Age in Place program, okay? So how did we get here? How did we move from what we do a Brush With Kindness to our Age in Place program? Well, a lot of things are happening in our community, okay? Number one, one in three homeowners are over age 65. So they're the biggest housing segment in our community, all right? Over 80% of folks wanna stay in their home as long as possible, okay? So most people, given a choice, would like to stay in their home. Less than 5% of homes in the Twin Cities are age friendly. So most homes are not built to age successfully in. We've got a lot of homes with basements and a lot of stairs. A lot of times we have a laundry in the basement and we have the bathroom on a second floor. So those just aren't the greatest things as folks age, as they start having arthritis or maybe knee replacement, those type of things. It's just not an easy situation. Most of our yards are not built age friendly either. Falls are the leading cause of someone having to leave their home and not being able to, to return. Over the next five years, just in the Twin Cities alone, over 6,000 older homeowners will need modifications. That came from a Wilder uh, Foundation study. So the need is massive uh, to help folks uh, age in place. Those over 65 will double in the next 15 years. So as we kind of researched this and saw that the need, because we're a housing organization, we thought, you know what? Maybe this is something that we should get into. And so this is what we found in the Twin Cities in terms of needs in our community, okay, for older adults. Need for transportation, need for chores, modifications, repairs, case management, and companionship. All of these were significant needs that we found in our community. Our sweet spot, where Habitat would probably come in, are these probably middle three here, chores, modifications, and repairs. And so we've kind of gotten into it a little bit to see how we might work with our community in these areas. So we're looking at new housing opportunities, okay? So uh, we're trying to help homeowners in the desire to number one, remain in their home. So we've started this home modification uh, program called Age in Place. But we're also helping people who want to stay on their property but wish they could downsize. We're looking at 
possibly building small homes in their backyard. So they could move in there, maybe a family member could be in their home or some type of situation like that. We're trying to, we're trying to uh, look at creative ways of doing this. Here is a, uh, this house here is a little, what they call an ADU or a backyard cottage, okay? Accessory dwelling unit. Well, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, uh, later. But it's, they're very popular out in the West Coast. I've seen a little bit about them in the paper. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's been a few here in the Twin Cities, but most of them are fairly expensive uh, to build. And then finally, we're looking at possibly uh, where someone could uh, stay in their community but move into maybe a small multi-unit house. So maybe a house that looks like this, but maybe you'd have two or three of them on a single family property. Staying in their community, moving out of their home, and we're looking at how can we do this in a, at an affordable price. So our current Age in Place program basically helps folks preserve home ownership with, by modifying their homes, okay? We take a holistic, person-centered approach. So what we do is we take off our expertise in construction when we go in and we ask the homeowner, what are the things that you're struggling with? What are the things that you would like to do that, you, that you're struggling with now? And how can we maybe adapt your home to make those type of things easier? So we come up with a package of home modifications and these modifications we're constantly looking at um, are those the best modifications and, and what else could we add to that? And what we're trying to do is to create a safe and comfortable space for folks to be able to navigate both inside and outside their homes, okay? Last year we served 22 homeowners just getting things off the ground. We're hoping to serve about 48 in uh, 2020. So we're, we're, we're just starting this program just trying to get things off the ground and learn along the way. So healthcare partnership, I said that we're taking a holistic approach. One of the things that we really learned is that uh, if we can partner with other institutions that older adults trust, that will make things easier. And so what we did was we, we saw this program out of Johns Hopkins called Capable, and what they did was they took occupational therapists, nurses, and carpenters and brought them together to serve older homeowners, and it worked out really well. They did a, a three-year study and saw a 75% increase of what they call activities of daily living. So basic things like bathing and eating, preparing meals, getting out of the house, those, those type of things improve dramatically when these folks work together to modify the homes of older adults, okay? Uh, here in the Twin Cities, Habitat is partnering with Alina Health. And we're starting with Alina Health. We're hoping to develop partnership with other major healthcare providers, but we're starting with Alina. And so Alina identifies qualifying patients um, they go in with their occupational therapist and nurse and do an assessment and see what type of things could benefit the, the homeowner. And then those that qualify are referred to Habitat to get the work done, okay? So um, like I said earlier, Twin Cities Habitat, we're one of five affiliates around the country uh, developing this capable model that was developed by Johns Hopkins. So this is Jerry. Jerry uh, lived in, has lived in her house for uh, over 40 years and is a typical person that we work with. Um, we were do, be able to do things like put in a handheld shower, put in railings in her front porch, put in a, actually a grab bar on the outside. Jerry has a big dog and that big dog uh, kind of controls her more than uh, you know, she controls the dog. And so she wanted something to hang on when she had the leash with the dog to be able to bring the dog inside. So that's why we put that there. We put some grab bars inside. We changed out her, uh, her uh, hardware on her cabinets 
to make them uh, uh, be able to open up easier. And so these are the type of, of modifications uh, that we're doing. But here's a list of some of the things that we've installed. So higher toilet, put in a ramp, put in what's called a tub cutout, which I'm just going to go to. A, so right here, rather than spending $10,000 pulling that tub out and putting in a shower, what we did for folks is we just cut something out and put this insert in so people could use it just like a shower, a lot cheaper than, than paying a plumber to do that. And then if folks still wanted to take a bath, there's another insert that we can put inside so they can continue to use that as a tub. So makes it makes it a lot easier. Um, we do th simple things like non-slip strips. Help with decluttering. Not working with folks who are, quote, hoarding, which is something different, but if folks have just accumulated things and, and want to get rid of stuff or, or organize, um, we can help them with that. Put in extra railings, putting lighting, uh, lever handles, technology is a big thing. So for some folks who have difficulty like going to their front door and answering the phone, if they have a smartphone, we can put in a smart doorbell so they can answer the phone on their phone or answer the door with on their phone. So we put in a couple of those and they're really slick. And then lift chairs. So I think you've maybe seen these on TV, they sell them. So they're a recliner that helps folks stand up. Um, they've been recommended uh, uh, by a lot of doctors, so we have, uh, we've had uh, installed those as well. So these are just some of the, th the common modifications that we're using. Um, here's a, a ramp that we built out in, uh, I'm not sure where that is, maybe uh, Oakdale, I think. Yep. So, and we use volunteers to do a, a lot of the work. So future expansion opportunities. Um, we're looking at possibly using our um, construction expertise to help go out and assess homes. The state of Minnesota asked us if we would be interested in providing home assessments to the general public. So we're looking at what would that, what would that take, what would that look like to be able to go out and, and do that uh, type of work. And then, um, like I mentioned, building what's called uh, accessory dwelling units. Here's another one up here in the corner. All right, so these would be um, units on a person's property, uh, either attached to their house or separate units where they would move into, maybe a family member would move into their house, maybe they would rent it out, maybe they would sell the house and the property would get divided. So there are a number of things and other opportunities uh, to be able to do that. Um, maybe they would move to another home that we would build in their community and we would work out an affordable trade between their property and the property that we built. Okay, so we're looking for a variety of, of things. And then we're also looking at building all of our homes in the future with what's called universal design. That's basically saying that all the homes that we build in the future are going to be age friendly and no matter what your ability, what your age, you're going to be able to live as long as possible. This gal here, this was our, she was our first home buyer, lived in South Minneapolis. Two years ago she had to move out because the home that we built was a rehab and again she had the laundry in the basement, the bathroom upstairs, and it just it wasn't working for her. So what we're trying to do in the future is to be able to build homes uh, where folks could stay and live no matter what their age. So here's an ADU example. This was built actually um, out in Monterey, California. So here was the original house here, and the Monterey Habitat built what's called an accessory dwelling unit out in the backyard. So it worked pretty good. I, I can't remember who moved into the main house, but I know um, the uh, gal who uh, lived in this house moved into the backyard. So 
basically living on one level, having an open floor plan. We have the main living area, kitchen and laundry. Uh, a lot of them are just studios, but some of them are also one bedroom uh, as well. Uh, the, the cool thing about this, most of them have really nice outdoor living spaces, so, so it seems bigger than just the, the home itself. And then the parking space, um, sometimes it's shared with the uh, uh, other folks that live in the house and sometimes it's separate. And then a lot of times uh, sheds are built because there's not a lot of storage in these houses. So here's some of the characteristics. Uh, I talked a little bit about um, the ADUs or um, the, what's called the you know, small backyard cottages, but they have universal design elements, uh, basically one level living, zero entry, meaning there's no stairs to get outside, wider doorways in case anyone uh, was in a wheelchair, um, lever handles uh, both on the doors and the plumbing to make it easy, a walk-in shower, strategically located railings and grab bars, easy access laundry, usually next to the kitchen. Um, but we're still learning. We're still learning from communities and, and experts in the field, you know, what would be the best design um, to do this on a, on a larger scale, okay? Whether it's in a backyard or on a single family lot, um, building these. So here's just some examples of uh, ADUs. I mean, um, so this is a little mo more modern. This was out in, uh, I think, San Diego County. It's like prefab. Yeah, a lot of these are, yeah. but prefab has really changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, today Habitat makes all of the walls of our homes in a warehouse, and then we deliver them out. We would love to be able to build our ADUs or small cottages in our warehouse and then just take it out to site. We want to make sure that what we're building people want to buy mm -hmm. and th that it's affordable and that we have the right design. Some other types of uh, homes, here's the inside of some of them. Yeah. How many square feet? So there, Anywhere between probably 400 and 800 square feet, depending on the you know the size of the lot, whether we're doing it in the backyard of someone's house, or we're doing like a cluster home on a single family lot, or we may be trying to put two or three of these units in. The other thing that we're we're also kind of uh, learning about is co-housing, and that's basically uh, built in built in your community, sharing a home with other older adults where you'd have um, common areas, the same, but also private areas. So this is a former group home actually in White Bear Lake. Oh, wow. And we went out and took a look at it and thought it would be a, a, a good place to uh, pilot a, a co-housing type of situation where maybe you could have a half a dozen folks uh, who had their own separate unit, but then you'd have maybe a common eating area, uh, um, those type of things. Um, so, you know, it's just something we're kind of kicking the tires with, and, and we know that other communities are, are looking at building something like this, and, and we know that there are folks out there who might be interested in sharing home uh, with someone else. So, just another possibility. So what's next for, for Habitat? Um, first, you know, we're trying to gather feedback from folks like you and, and, and say, you know, is there interest in these services? What are, the, you know, what type of home designs are most functional and appealing? What housing alternatives are most appealing? We want to get city and county support. Uh, we want to figure out a financing model so this is affordable. Uh, we're gonna, we know we're going to have to raise resources between probably what we build them for and what someone can afford. It's kind of what we do today with our home building model, okay? We might build a home for 260000 Someone can only afford 180000 We have to raise the money to make sure that mortgage is affordable for that person, okay? And so we're looking at, is that a model 
that we could do with this type of housing as well. And then we, we're, we're looking at possibly developing a pilot to maybe have a showcase home so that uh, folks can kind of go and see what this could look like. All right, here's a quote. Uh, uh, George Washington Carver says, how far you go in life depends on being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant with the weak and strong, because someday in life you will be, have been all these. And basically what that says is that we're trying to understand and come alongside older adults and trying to walk in their shoes and see what are those type of things that they're looking for in a future house, whether it's their house that they're living in or a different house, and how can Habitat come alongside them and serve them if they're, with their housing needs.